Guys, I love this film, and you are the comic relief that is very necessary and very funny in the story. Thank you. <laughs> now, you play a very gassy warthog. I do. I heard that you secretly hoped that you would be tapped for the role. I did hope that I would, yes, when I read it was happening and that Jon Favreau was doing it, I honestly thought like, I think, I think I'd be good for that role, <laughs> which I don't think very often, uh, even for roles I give myself. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was fantastic that it worked out. You're like, you're like I'm gassy, I'm funny. I'm a war this dog, is, yeah, yeah. I, I, get, I get all this, I get all these things, yeah. And you play a very wise-cracking meerkat. What yeah. was it like having both of you being such, you know, talented comedians? What was it like, because it wasn't just a normal, you know, in a booth by yourself mm -hmm. recording situation. Tell me about how you got to kind of bounce off each other. Well, we were lucky. Like you said, with these movies, usually you record separately. Sometimes the actors are in different parts of the country or the planet, yep. uh, and they just send in their role. But we got to be together and really tackle it as if it was a more traditional live-action movie. And we got to riff off of each other in improv, and everyone was throwing out ideas, and it was really collaborative. And I think you can feel that in the movie, that we're in the room together and, and bantering with each other. So that was cool. Yeah. So it's so... Some of the lines are... At one point, you're like, be my guest. There was a reference to... Yes. <laughs> Beauty yeah. and the Beast. I mean, it's yeah. so off the wall. It's so brilliant. It's so crazy that yeah. they let us do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, the original movie was so beloved. Just a few Academy Awards, Tonys. Were you tempted to, to watch it and kind of let that influence how you play the character? Or is that a dangerous thing to do because, you know, it might influence you and you can't be true to your character? Yeah, I tried to stay away from it. Uh, just, uh, I mean, I'd seen it a lot of times anyway, but I tried, I didn't like, yeah, go in. I, I specifically wanted to try to not be influenced by it to bring our own, you know, stuff to it. And I assumed whatever I remembered was the stuff that people would want. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. I had seen the Broadway version a few years ago, so fairly recently. I hadn't seen the movie in a while, and I decided it would be better to stay away from it because some of it was still in my head anyway just because it's so iconic. And like Seth said, we wanted to make it our own while also nodding to some of what people lo loved in the original, obviously. Um, but it was already enough in my head where I didn't need to revisit it. And I feel like it's in my head. Like I feel like I could do it without right. like, having to revisit it. Yeah, no, it's like a song that everyone kind of knows the can words you, to. Can we get like a little one line of I it? I only sing with Pharrell present. Yeah. <laughs> I only sing with Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. Well, my rider. Yeah. Yeah. Finally it happens. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> did you guys work with Beyonce? No. We didn't record with her. No, we did not record with her. Although our characters don't have a ton to do with yeah. Nala. We're in separate parts of Can You Feel the Love Tonight. We have a brief scene with her uh, when she first comes back uh, and meets Simba. But no, we didn't record with her. But it was still very rare that we got to record with each other at all. I so know, yeah, It's so true. Um, last question is... Um, the, the, the philosophy of your characters about ha having no worries for the rest of your life, which is usually not what comedians... <laughs> comedians are usually the opposite. Yes. Uh, would you say that you are in, in life kind of the opposite of that and it was fun to play that? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I am not like that. I'm fueled yeah. by uh, concern and dread. And so <laughs> it, was, it was lovely to, for a brief moment, step into the shoes of someone who was not like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, they're kind of rebellious in their own weird way, yeah. you know, uh, and that's always fun, you know. I am so excited to be sitting down with you both because this film is spectacular. Thank you. Now, it has the realism of National Geographic and then the kind of the magic of Disney. How did you create that? That was part of the, you know, the challenge we, we created for ourselves because the old movie holds up so well, we want to differentiate this. It couldn't just feel like an animated remake. But the idea of something that looked like it was cinematically like a National Geographic documentary or a Planet Earth, BBC document, Attenborough documentary, mm -hmm. seeing those characters uh, performing naturally. And those documentaries have a lot of emotion too. So I said, if we could use the tricks that they use in documentaries to convey that emotion, what would it like to be seeing the Lion King story unfold that way? And then of course you have all the great music and you have the great performances, yeah. but that was the trick is using uh, virtual camera work and, and new rendering techniques and really thoughtful hand animation 
and environment design, all digital, to help create the illusion that you're looking at something that's actually photographed. I walked out and I said, they're geniuses, that's it, I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> now you play Simba, which is pretty big shoes, or should I say pause to fill. Um, you were a Grammy winning performer, but is it true that you guys first met in the Upright Citizens uh, improv world back in, is that, is, no. did you ever meet, no? We, we both did it, but definitely. Yeah. I don't, but I don't know if your, we met. But that was yeah. your background. I yes. think we met at that round table interview. Yeah. When, when, I, when I met him, I knew him already. I knew him because my world and my son's world crossed. My world is all those people from like Tina Fey's world of 30 Rock, which is where he wrote. He also did comedy and Upper Citizens Brigade. Those are all people I knew from Chicago. But my son knew him as Childish Gambino and would have a life-size portrait of him on the wall. And so as I was thinking of who could play Simba, who could play Simba, and I met him mm -hmm. at a press event and I pulled him aside, I was like, before I bring this even up to Disney, is this something you'd be interested I in? I thought he was going to just have me sign something. I really <laughs> did. He was like, oh, can I speak to you on the side? I was like, oh, sure. Like, I thought it was like, it was, so, I didn't even know they were making The Lion King. So what it was did like, you think he was gonna, you were going to sign? Like an autograph? Just like, a, yeah, an autograph. Or like, a, a, like you know, he told me if someone's a fan, I was like, oh, he wants me to sign like a uh, an album or something, which I was like, oh, that'd be fine, you know. But he was like, hey, do you want to be Simba? And I was, I was like, oh. What what do you mean? Like I literally was like I don't understand this. Is this the live ver? Is this the live show? Are they doing that? I didn't understand, but I I said yes anyway. Good decision. Like, I was like, yeah, it was a good decision. That's great. And Beyonce. Yeah. What about I mean, Beyonce? Is what great. I mean, she's such an icon, you know, and when a star in her in her own kind of stratosphere. What was it about working with her that kind of surprised you? Because I feel like we feel like we know so much about her. I think well, well when you when you find you know you know her from the stage you know her from the videos from the films from everything and then you meet her and she came in in jeans and a t-shirt with her hair up and she was ready to work and and the thing that really strikes me about her is how hard working she is and how curious she is everything we're doing with the technology she took the time as busy as she was to go through try out the virtual reality headsets see the the way we were it was a new way of making movies nobody had done before she was very interested in that and then of course she just did the you know she did the Coachella show she had kids she had all this in the time that we're working together and she recorded an album and as Donald pointed out to me earlier after after the premiere party she said okay I'm going back to the studio to, to work on a Lion King inspired by album like after the premiere so she does you know she is not uh, letting up on the accelerator and you mm -hmm. know and, and while maintaining a balanced life as this guy does mm -hmm. having a good family life and having a really robust professional life Guys, very impressive. Well, congratulations. Thank it's you. beautiful. Congratulations on this film and your performances in it. You both played two of the more kind of serious kind of characters. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> now you bring, you play Scar, and you bring this kind of almost Shakespearean villainy to your character. It was, you were just so dark, yeah. you know? Was it fun to, to play a character like that? Totally, you know, always. Um, the uh, And just getting into that, to the mindset, you know, mm -hmm. just the psychology is what I was excited about. And How do you was, do that? Well, it's just trying to understand Scar, mm -hmm. you know, understand that obsession, exactly in the Shakespearean way, actually, mm -hmm. of understanding the obsession with power and status and and um, and that sort of addiction to those things and, and uh, you know, um, and understanding that that's part, that's actually in some degree part of all of us, you know, but most of us are able to keep a bit of a lid on it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but not so with Scar. Um, and it's not in a way something that he can control. He doesn't really have the tools to control it. So if you can imagine a person or a character, you know, that is that is kept awake at night, that can't live mm. with the status quo, can't live with the situation as it is, you start to kind of develop an understanding, at least, mm. of why he's driven to um, the excesses that he is. And so it's trying to get into that and trying to see him in that way was, um, you know, an interesting process. Oh, you did it so well. And what I love about it, as a female watching your character so full of nobility and strength, and in, in the lion dynamic in nature, the lioness has such a crucial, powerful role in the pride. Yes. You know, was that something that kind of spoke to you as a, an empowered woman? Uh, mm. You think I'm empowered? I think you're empowered. Okay. I think that, you know, when people talk about strong women... Well, it's just Not that it should be separate. I'm just saying you just feel empowered as a human being. Well, what I'm going to say is yeah. there, it is inherent in female animals, whether we've evolved into people or not. It is inherent uh, strength. And so... The more natural a woman you become or grow into, 
the stronger you will appear. And I think, you know, the lionesses all have that. Nala has it. Hers, she hasn't been young. Nala hasn't, hers hasn't, she hasn't figured out how to, to tame that, how to channel that. Mm -hmm. But I, in nature, yes, the lionesses are, are the, the keepers of, of the pride, as in families, women are the are the keepers of the pride not that men can't be when called upon mm. uh, so but it is something we learn from the the mother part of ourselves because we're, we're we're male and female all at the same time so we we get to lean into whatever whatever the situation calls for mm, so true there are so many kind of archetypal themes about life you know birth and death and and revenge and betrayal and the circle of life what was it about some of these themes that kind of spoke to you i love the fact that and it just makes me weep in a way that makes me feel safe and, and not anxious is when he talks about the stars and that all the great mm. kings of the past are looking down on you. Mm. I, I, I believe that. It's beautiful. <laughs> and what about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like I always respond to this idea of, of, of home and what, and what home means. Um, and home being that sense in the terms of, um, obviously in the, the family and this kind of um, paternal and maternal relationships and those dynamics, but also the psychology of um, of coming to terms with home. Um, mm -hmm. That that all roads in the end lead home. You know, perhaps not physically, but uh, certainly psychologically. And uh, and uh, and coming to understand where one has come from is an important part of understanding who one is and and reconciling oneself to one's own life essentially. And so. That's a theme of the story that I always love, and that circle of him of Simba arriving back home and, and re-understanding home as if for the first time, is uh, is very very important. Wonderful guys, I've got chills listening to you both. <laughs> I'm like, can we just stay here together? <laughs> until they throw me out. Congratulations, you brought so so much nobility and strength and terror to the. To the <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you.